everyone, welcome to Baking School. If you aren't familiar with me, I am Kristen Baker Betty Hoffman, and I'm a trained chef and the baking instructor here on BakerBetty.com. Now, I am so excited to bring you this Intro to Yeast Spreads course because I can't tell you how many times my readers tell me that they are intimidated by baking with yeast. So I really wanted to create this course so that you can feel really confident about baking with yeast and have a lot of fun with it. Now today I want to talk about some yeast basics. We're going to talk about um, what yeast is and a little bit about how it works. And then we're going to dive right in to baking our very first loaf of bread because I want you to see just how easy it truly can be. Now let's talk a little bit about what yeast is. So yeast is actually a living organism. It is a fungus and it is all around us. Yeast is floating through the air. It is living in our bodies and it is in a lot of food that we eat. Now the yeast that we are going to be baking with for this course and the most common type of yeast for home baking is what is called dried yeast. Now, yeast needs two things to thrive. It needs moisture and it needs a food source. So dried yeast has had these things removed from it. It has had all of the moisture taken out of it and so it is now essentially in a dormant state. So I have a little container of dried yeast here. You can see these are very, very tiny little cells and all of these are yeast cells that have been dried and they do not have any moisture in them so that they are not able to thrive at the moment. But they are still alive, they're just essentially asleep. So in order to wake these yeast cells up and begin using them for baking, they need to have some moisture introduced to them and they need a food source. So I'm going to pour some of this yeast into some water here and I'm going to give it a food source. So yeast feeds on sugars and it also feeds and on starches, so it would feed on the starches found in flour in our bread dough. So in order to give this yeast something to feed on, I'm going to add some sugar and then I'm just going to stir this up and give it a little bit of time. Now as this yeast wakes up and starts feeding on that sugar, it's going to start creating carbon dioxide gases. And we'll start to see in this water that there will be some bubbles forming and that is just signs that the yeast is awake and it is feeding and that carbon dioxide gas is being produced. Now when this happens in a bread dough, that carbon dioxide gas is what makes the dough rise. So we'll check back in on this in a moment once the yeast starts waking up. Now I want to talk a little bit about a diff few different kinds of yeast, dried yeast, that you might bake with. So active dry yeast is kind of the original form of dried yeast. Now these yeast cells are a little bit bigger than some of the other types of yeast that we'll talk about. They function just a little bit slower and the original active dry yeast did need to be hydrated in some water before you added it into your bread dough. But they've made some improvements in the way they do make this yeast now and it actually can just be added right into your dry ingredients. It does not have to be hydrated before you add it into your bread dough. But it does function a little bit slower than the other types of yeast and um, it takes about twice as long to rise as the next type of yeast that we're going to talk about which is a quick rise yeast. Now this is also called instant yeast and rapid rise yeast. Now this type of yeast has a little bit smaller yeast cells and they function a little quicker. So your rise time when using the instant rise yeast as opposed to the active dry yeast is going to be about twice as fast. Now these two yeasts can be substituted for each other one for one in pretty much any bread recipe. The only time when you might not want to use a quick rise yeast or a rapid rise yeast is if you are going to let your shaped dough proof in the refrigerator for a long period of time. Now we will talk about that more as we get into all of our bread making, um, but that would really be the only time when you wouldn't want to substitute the two. Now the last type of yeast I wanted to show you is what is called platinum superior baking yeast. 
Now this is made by a brand called Red Star Yeast, and this is the official yeast brand that I use for all of my baking and for this course. And this is a type of instant rise or rapid rise yeast that has some bread improvers added to it. Now what this does is it helps a new baker um, not over knead their dough, and it also gives a much better oven spring when you hit the oven. So I love this yeast. I always get wonderful results from it. And if you are new to baking with yeast, I would definitely recommend finding this yeast and giving it a try. Now I hear people say all of the time that they're really worried about killing their yeast in baking, and they're just not really sure what types of things might kill their yeast. So the one thing that you really do need to be concerned about when working with yeast is your hot temperatures. Now, a lot of recipes do specify some pretty specific temperatures when for the liquid for your bread dough. They might say 110 or 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, people get a little bit nervous about this because maybe they don't have a thermometer to check the temperature. So what I would say is definitely always err on the side of the liquid being too cool rather than too hot. So if the liquid is too hot for you to touch, it is definitely going to be too hot for the yeast. Now a cooler temperature is not going to kill your yeast, it's not going to ruin your bread dough, it just might slow down the process a little bit of the yeast waking up and really starting to feed and create that carbon dioxide gas. So cool temperatures slow yeast down, and then warmer temperatures speed yeast up, and then eventually it does die once you get to really hot temperatures. So I would always say err on the side of being just a little bit cooler, just to be safe. Now another thing that might be important to note about working with dry yeast is you might hear people talk about proofing your yeast. Now what proofing your yeast means is it's actually very similar to what we have just done with pouring our yeast into the liquid and then adding some food for it to feed on. So what you would do when you proof your yeast is you would add it to the liquid called for in the recipe and then you would add just a pinch of sugar. Now what this does is it wakes your yeast up and will start letting it feed and this is just kind of a little insurance policy for you to see that your yeast is actually alive. Once you see bubbles starting to come up to the top and um, that activity in your liquid, that is how you know your yeast is alive. Now this is completely optional step. It's not 100% necessary, but a lot of people do like to do it just to make sure that they're not going to make their bread dough and then find out later that the yeast wasn't alive. Okay, so let's look back at our yeast and sugar mixture. So you can see here that there are some bubbles and foam forming on the top. And if you watched really closely, you'd start to see bubbles popping up to the top almost like the mixture is carbonated. Now, this is happening because the mixture truly is being carbonated. As the yeast is feeding, it is creating that carbon dioxide gas, and all of that is starting to pop up to the top, and this is how you know that your yeast is alive and feeding. So the next lesson after this one is a glossary of all of the yeast spread terminology that we will be going through in this course. Now you are welcome to go ahead and start familiarizing yourself with all of those words, but we will be going over them as they naturally come up in our yeast bread baking process. Now after that, we're diving right into baking our very first loaf of bread, and it is a no need hearth bread. Now I cannot wait for you to bake this bread. You are going to be so amazed at how amazing it turns out and how easy it is to make. So I cannot wait to dive in. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.